we are going to talk about a game that is near and dear my heart. This is not the first text adventure I ever played. That would be Haunted House on the TRS-80 Model 1. However, this is the first game that I ever played that I was unable to complete. In fact, I have not been able to complete it for the majority of my life until just about an hour ago, where I finished mapping it out. It's a game called Xenos. It was made for the TRS-80 Model 1, the TRS-80 Model 3, and no other that I am aware of. According to the manual, it is catalog number 25-1955, it was released in 1981, and from what I can find from my research, it was sold for $24.95, basically $25. I do not know what that is in adjusted dollars at this time. One thing about it that I remember is it is the first game that I ever played that was on a floppy drive. Before that, everything I had played had been either hand-typed in or had been found on a cassette. As you can see, I am set up here with a TRS-DOS Disk Operating System version 2.3, which was for the Model 1. The opening text of the book reads, Introduction, 308 AM, Ring. At first you try to bury your head under the pillow, hoping it will go away, but no. Ring, there it is again. What idiot could possibly calling at this unholy hour? You search your nightstand in the dark, clumsily grabbing the receiver. Yeah, you mumble in the nuance of a machine, hoping to convey the extreme crankiness and anger. Dr. Sands, the voice at the other end of the wire, asks. Nah, it's Mary Poppins. Of course it's Dr. Sands. Who is this and what do you want? Dr. Sands, it's General Thatcher, U.S. Air Force at the Pentagon. Sorry to wake you, but we have an urgent situation here. The general's voice sounds close to panic. Oh, yeah? What happened? Somebody pushed the button by mistake again? Don't worry, just have them unplug the blasted computer. The missiles won't launch for at least another five minutes. You're safe till then. You're ready to hang up and get back to sleep, but the general won't let you. Dr. Sands, I'm trying to be serious. We have a major incident on our hands. Before you have time to say another word, the general is spilling out his tale of woe. He tells you of the sighting made yesterday by one of his top pilots. First the flash, then the strange glow coming from the canyon outside of Purgatory, New Mexico. The Air Force investigators who were sent in, the lone survivor who managed to get out, though not with his sanity. Somehow, they've managed to convince themselves that you're the only one who can help them out. Before you hang up, visions of immortal fame, riches beyond compare, a made-for-TV movie, and a ticker tape parade. This is it, your big chance to be a hero. 3.57 a.m. You trip over the cat on your way out the garage to speed to the airport, where the USAF jet is waiting to wing you to New Mexico. By now you've had a little time to think. Could it be a radioactive meteor? Could it perhaps be a bona fide UFO? Could it be a secret test of a nuclear device gone wrong? What the dickens is it? And is this ticker tape parade really worth putting your life on the line? 7.32 a.m. You step out of the jeep. Just west of Purgatory, turning to the driver, you ask, Did the general give you any instructions to wait for me? Are you kidding? The edgy private squeaks. I'm getting out of here as fast as I can. The jeep does a 180 and roars off in the direction from whence it came. Looking down the road, you can see that you've made the mistake of your life. The air seems oppressive as you begin walking toward the town. There are no signs of life. You should have known better than to get mixed up in this. Next time, I'm leaving the phone off the hook, you say aloud, to be answered by the ominous howl of the arid wind. One thing I need to say about this game is it is absolutely huge. For its era, it's unbelievable to me the amount of things they were able to cram into it. So in the interest of sanity and the interest of making things brief, I have decided that I will not show exploring everything and looking at every location everywhere. 
There are a lot of locations that are just flavor text and there to apparently confuse the player. It's very easy to get lost and it is very easy to do something accidentally that will bring about the inability to complete the game. So the first thing we need to do is we need to load up via a disk operating system. From my memory, back on the old Model 1, you needed to have the Xenos disk in the first drive, which is drive 0. But for some reason on this, I do not need to have something in drive 0 other than uh, the Tristos disk itself, as you can see. So the Xenos is sitting on drive 1. So let us go and get started. Please be aware that I have my instructions for how I'm going to do this written down, so I may be taking pauses here and there. We begin. Xenos, stranger beware. Highway West, you are standing on the highway. In the distance to the east you can see a small town. There appears to be a gas station on the south side of the road, about halfway between you and the town. To the west, the highway stretches to the horizon. We are going to start by going west a bit. You are still in the desert. An empty highway travels east and west. You are still in the desert. An empty highway travels east and west. You are still in the desert. The highway curves here, leading due east and south. A three-foot-tall shaggy creature with razor-sharp claws and slavering teeth stands before you. Boy, this desert is going to be tough to cross. I'm going to go north now. You are still in the desert. Something seems to be following you. You are still in the desert. There is a two-inch green cube here. There is a rod with a green sphere. Nearby, an alien being is squirming on the ground. It looks up at you and then says, Gleepop. He then points at the cube and then points west. He then becomes very still. So I would like to get the rod. The rod with the green sphere taken, you can really feel the heat of the sun burning down on you in this desert. And then let's get the cube. The two inch green cube is taken. We are still in the desert and there is a dead alien here. Let us head back toward the town now. So we're going to retrace our steps and go south. We're still in the desert. A three foot tall shaggy creature with razor sharp claws and slavering teeth stands before you. The alien rushes past you in its frenzied attempt to attack you. You are still in the desert. A highway curves here, leading due east and south. Something seems to be following you. You are still in the desert. An empty highway travels east and west. Something seems to be following you. I hope you brought lots of food and water. You are still in the desert. An empty highway travels east and west. Something seems to be following you. Continuing east. Highway West. You are standing on the highway. In the distance to the east you can see a small town. There appears to be a gas station on the south side of the road, about halfway between you and the town. To the west the highway stretches to the horizon. As you can probably tell, we're back where we started. Let's go east. West of the station. You are on the road west of a gas station. From here you can see a message painted on the west wall of the gas station. Read message. Last chance, next gas, 60 miles. Let's go east and get in front of the station. You're standing in front of the last chance gas station. To the east you can make out individual buildings in town. To the west the road disappears into a seemingly endless desert. A door leads south into the station. An old-fashioned glass top pump stands here. On the gas pump can be seen a padlock. So we are going to first try to go into the gas station. The door is closed. 
The door is now open. One thing I noticed about Xenos that I had not remembered was that you do not enter doors or go through doors at this point in the game. You stay true to your directions. We go south. Gas station. You are now standing in the gas station office. The office is a dirty little room with only one entrance. The table faces the south wall. There is a jack here. On the table can be seen a skeleton key and a small crowbar. I'm going to get the crowbar. I have not found an immediate use for the skeleton key or the jack yet. I'm going to leave. So we are in front of the station again. We are going to go east toward the city. City limit. You are on the road east of the gas station. You can see a small sign to the east. It reads city limit. West of town. You are on a road at the city limits west of town. To the west you can see a gas station just south of the highway. To the east you can read signs on some of the buildings in town. The building on the south side of the street is an adobe structure with bars in the windows. The sign out front reads, Sheriff. The building to the north side of the street has a small neon sign outside that reads, Harvey's Bar and Grill. We are going to go east one more time. Main Street West. You are standing on Main Street at the west side of town. To the north, you can see the saloon. To the south, there is the sheriff's office. Far to the west, you see a building. To the east, you can see signs of several buildings. The building beside the bar reads Bob's Hardware. The building further down the road reads Hotel. The structure next to the sheriff's office reads Slim's Groceries. The structure beyond that simply reads Bank. Swinging doors lead to the saloon. A door leads to the sheriff's office. Now, one of the things I have a hard time with understanding is why swinging doors would not just open. So let's open the saloon door. And now we can go north. You're inside the building. There is a large bar along the east wall. Several chairs and tables are scattered around the room. In the corner stands an ancient radio about the size of a jukebox. On the bar can be seen a bottle. The bottle contains a clear brown solution. Behind the bar there is a small sink. The sink contains a small amount of cool, clear water. I want to get the bottle and I can open the bottle if I do not open the bottle, I cannot do anything with it. And I want to fill the bottle with water. Now let's look around again. Notice the jukebox. Well, not a jukebox, but a radio the size of the jukebox. There's nothing special about it nothing behind the radio, but if you turn the radio on, and the famous doctor, still investigating the strange UFO landing in the desert. People are evacuating the area for miles around, and we now return to our regular program. The radio begins playing music. Let's go south. And we are back outside. I want to go east now. We've been going east steadily. West Alley Intersection. You are standing at the intersection of Main Street and an alley at the west end of town. The south alley leads to the desert. Let's go east again. Town Center. You are now standing at the center of town. To the north is Bob's Hardware. To the south is Slim's Groceries. To the east is the hotel. Opposing it on the south side of the street is the first bank of purgatory. To the west, beside Bob's hardware, is Harvey's Bar and Grill. Opposing it on the south side of the street is the sheriff's office. A door leads to Slim's. A door leads to Bob's. 
as you can tell by now, it's really good if you're playing this game to map everything out. The descriptions get redundant. Next we are going to try and go in the sheriff's office. Oh. Oops. I may have made a mistake in my map. East Alley Intersection. You now stand at an intersection of Main Street and the Alley of East Town. A hotel sits to your east. On the north side of the street, opposite it, on the south side of the street, is a brick building that serves as the town's bank. To the west, you can see the south side of the hardware store. Beside the hardware store, further down the street, is a large wooden building with a neon sign in front. To the west, on the south side of the street, there is Slim's Groceries. Further down the street, there is an adobe building. I think what I did was I overshot the sheriff's, which, simply put, the door is locked. We are going to continue going east. Main Street East. You're on Main Street at the east end of town. On the north side of the street is a large wooden building marked Hotel. On the south side of the street is a large brick building that is marked Bank. In large letters on a wooden sign out front. In the window there is a small painted sign that reads Total Assets 33,000. There are double doors leading to the hotel. A massive door leads to the bank. So let's open the hotel door. The hotel the door is now open. We go north. Hotel Lobby. You now stand inside the Purgatory Hotel. To the east there is a staircase leading up to the second floor. There is an exit to the south. In the prominent place on the wall there can be there is a small sign. On the counter can be seen a master key. This is not important, but it really helps. Warning, in case of tornado, all hotel guests should meet at the west side of the saloon and enter the storm shelter. That will come up later, but as I said, it is not necessary if you explore. You will find the area on your own. Let's get the master key. Master key is taken. Let's look around again. We are going up the staircase to the east. Hallway. You are in a short, narrow hallway. A red door leads north. A blue door leads south. These doors are going to lead to similar rooms, and since we only need to open one, we are going to open the one we have to. We're going to open the red door with the master key. We're going to go north into the room. You're in a small room here. There is a bed, a chair, and a small dresser. Examine the dresser. Does not say anything. Let's open the dresser. The dresser is now open. The dresser contains a brass key. Let's get the brass key. The brass key is taken. So we are going to go south and get out of the room. West takes us back down the stairs into the lobby, and south takes us back outside. So now we are going to head back to the sheriff's office, which I overshot the last time. So we're going to go west. I am not going to read that. West again. West again. If you notice, the green sphere is slowly flashing and beeping now. And west again. We are standing on Main Street at the west side of town. To the north we can see a saloon, and to the south there is the sheriff's office. So let's go south. The sheriff's office's door is closed. It is locked. So we are going to
unlock the sheriff's door with the brass key? Open the sheriff's door and go south. We are now in the sheriff's office. A massive metal desk sits against the east wall. It has three drawers from top to bottom. Above the desk is a gun cabinet. There is a loaded double barrel shotgun locked in the cabinet. Let's try and open the top drawer. top drawer is locked. I am carrying a master key and a brass key, but neither one of those are going to be any help. For example, we used the brass key to get in this room, but one would think maybe the master key would help. It does not seem to work. That does not seem to work, so we are going to try using the crowbar. There is a screech of tortured metal and the drawer bursts open. The top drawer is open. The top drawer contains a big steel key and a red key and a small key. One thing this game has is too many keys. And the worst part about it is you do not have enough inventory space to carry all the keys. So we are going to look at our inventory again. And notice we are carrying the master key and the brass key and the crowbar. I do not need those anymore. Let's get rid of the crowbar. Let's get rid of the brass key. And let's get rid of the master key. Okay, let's get th get the small key that was in the drawer. And we are going to uh, <coughs> we are going to look at the cabinet. It is closed. The cabinet is locked. So we're going to unlock the cabinet with the small key. The key turns, the lock clicks, and the cabinet springs open. Open the cabinet. Oh, right, it is not closed anymore. So let's get the shotgun. And then we're going to leave. The main street west swinging doors lead to the saloon. A door leads to the sheriff's office. Now we want to go back to the hardware store, which is to the east. It's the alley. And then east again, as you can see. To the north is Bob's hardware. Let's go north. The door to Bob's is closed. Open Bob's hardware door. The door is now open. And we go north. Hardware south. You're in the front half of the hardware store. There is a large aquarium sitting on the floor near you. Nothing special about the aquarium. Let's go north again, and this way we will be in the back of the store. There is a shovel here. There is a nine-foot diamond-back rattlesnake coiled on the floor. This is where the first real mistake can be made. Do not waste any time. Just shoot the snake with the shotgun. 
Blam! Good shot. The snake is dead. Get the shovel. You cannot carry that much. Let's get rid of the key. Interesting inventory. I have to drop a small key in order to pick up a shovel. Let's go south and south again, and we are back outside. We are now going to try and find the storm shelter, which is west. West Alley intersection. The green sphere is slowly flashing and beeping. West again. This puts us in front of the Sheriff's Office again. West again. West of town. You are on the road at the city limits just west of town. To the west you can see a gas station just south of the highway. To the east you can read signs of some of the buildings in town. The building on the south side of the street is an adobe structure with bars in the windows. The sign out front reads, Sheriff. The building on the north side of the street has a small neon sign that outside that reads Harvey's Bar and Grill. So let's go north. West side of Saloon. You are now north of the highway at the west end of town. To the east you can see the side of a wooden building. To the south, on the far side of the street, you can see the side of a building, adobe building. To the north and to the west, the desert fills the horizon. There are no visible entrances. The desert sand is banked against the wall. We are going to examine the sand. There's nothing special about the man mound of sand. Try digging in the sand. With what? If you dig in the sand with hands, it makes a choke. Dig in the sand with the shovel, you discover a door. The door is now open. We do not really... This is where the, instru the movement instructions change. Storm shelter. You have entered a storm shelter. It is extremely dark and you are tangled in a myriad of spider webs. There is a stick of dynamite here. Get dynamite. You can't carry that much. Drop the shovel. Stick of dynamite is taken. The west side of saloon. A door leads underground. Let's go south again and get back to the west of town. Now, excuse me for a moment while I check. I would like to make sure what we have. A shotgun, a stick of dynamite, a bottle containing a small amount of water, a green cube, and a green sphere. According to my notes, that is what we need. We are going to pass through town, east, 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 and East. Highway East. You are on the highway. To the west, in the distance, you see what appears to be a small town. To the north and south, the monotonous desert surrounds you. The highway looks like a black ribbon stretching to the east. From what I have been able to tell, here, this is now like a maze. And I have mapped out the way to get through this maze, but it's very easy to make a mistake. So we are going to go in blocks of two. We are going to go east. 
east, and then north and north, north and north, north and north, west, north, west, south. West, north, north. As you can see, we are on the canyon floor. To the west, you can see a large crater with a cylindrical metal object resting in it. Something seems to be following you. So we are going to go west again. Forgive me for not taking the time to read each of those out loud as it is very easy to get lost. You are now in a crater where a UFO has landed. The crater opens to the east. A massive boulder blocks the entrance into the ship. Something seems to be following you. Now look at what we have again. We are carrying a shotgun, a stick of dynamite, a bottle with water, the cube, and the sphere. We are also fighting an alien. Examine the dynamite. Something is written on the stick of dynamite. Read the dynamite. Self-igniting dynamite. Handle with care. To use, strike, fuse, evacuate area. The alien is being really not nice, and I hope it does not kill me before I complete this section. Let's strike the fuse. The dynamite begins hissing and sputtering. So let's drop the dynamite. Oops. Drop dynamite. It's dropped. It continues hissing and sputtering. We are going to go east. Here are now on the canyon floor. Boom! Something seems to be following you. Let's go west. <coughs> you are now at the crater where the UFO has landed. The crater opens to the east. The entrance to the ship has been blown clear. Something seems to be following you. Let's go west again. Notice the loading time. You are in a small cubicle. There is a yellow button on the opposite wall. On the near wall, there is a small square hole about two inches deep. So there are... There's a square hole and I have some things in my inventory. Notice I have the green cube and the green sphere. So let's put the cube in the hole. And then let's put the rod in the hole. Now we push the yellow button. The black-sized oval appears on wall and expands to almost man-sized proportions. You are now in a large rectangular room and an eerie moving picture faces you. On the wall behind you there are three buttons, one red, one blue, one yellow. They are arranged horizontally with the red button on the right. This is going to feel like another maze. I'm going to push the blue button and enter the oval. We are in another room with looks in exactly the same. Well, almost exactly the same. There is a red button and a blue button. 
going to push the blue button. And then enter the oval. We are in a small grey room. There is a large square recess in one panel. Once more, looking behind you, you see a pair of red and blue buttons on the wall. There is a small white table here. On the table can be seen a two-inch grey cube. Let's get the cube. Two-inch grey cube is taken. We are going to continue now. be nice, would be very nice, if I could just use abbreviations. We are in a white room with a chair which faces the rest wall. There is a weird looking hand grip that extends out of the wall towards the chair. The wall behind it, the place you are standing, has a red and a blue button on it. So let's continue by pushing the blue button. Enter the oval. Push the blue button. And enter the oval. You're in a small room. There is a red table against one wall. On the opposing wall there is the now familiar red and blue button arrangement. On the table can be seen a transparent vial. The transparent vial contains a TSOM solution. The vial is closed. We will get the vial and then we need to do some more button pushing. You are in a room with a gentle violet light emanating from the ceiling. There is a large metal pedestal standing in the center of the room. There is a two-inch square hole on top of the pedestal. On the wall, your back initially faced are a red button and a blue button arranged horizontally from left to right. Notice we are carrying a two-inch gray cube. Putting the grey cube in the hole by your command, the little cube begins to curl brightly and then settles into a shade of white. Two inch white cube taken. Now this is where it gets really monotonous. So now we are going back does not allow me to say go oval. For those who are just listening and not watching, I am entering through the ovals via pushing red buttons.
You are now in a large rectangular room. An eerie moving picture faces you. On the wall behind you there are three buttons, one red, one blue, and one yellow. They are arranged horizontally with the red button on the right. As you probably remember, this is the room we initially entered into before we started hitting buttons. We are going to continue pushing red buttons. We are going to enter the oval, and it's just another room. You now find yourself in a dimly lit cubicle. There is a cylinder with a glass lid against one wall. Behind you, you discover the wall has two buttons on it, a red button and a blue button. Arranged from left to right, the glass cylinder contains a white button and a maroon button. As a hint, do not mess around with this cylinder. You are in a small room with black walls. In the center of the room is a small chair facing a small control panel. The wall behind the chair has upon it a pair of teleportal buttons. One is red, one is blue. On the control panel can be seen a white button. You are in a small rectangular room. In the center of the room is a chair which faces a large cube. There is a small hole about two inches deep in the top of the cube. A cursory inspection of the room reveals a blue button on one of the walls. As a little interesting point, it is from this in the original game that I, rem I learned the word cursory, or in the context a cursory inspection. We are going to put the white cube in the hole. A brilliant flash of light nearly blinds you and you feel somewhat wiser than before. The little cube turns gray. I'm not going to touch the cube. But we now need to go back the way we came. And we are now pushing blue buttons instead of red. Again. Seriously, leave the white button and the maroon button alone.
You are in a small grey room. There is a panel with three buttons. One is red, one is blue, and one is yellow. We have already used the red and the blue one from this room. If you look around, well, it does not give better description. So let's push the yellow button and an oval appears and enter the oval. You're in a small grey room. There is a panel with three buttons. One is red, one is blue, and one is yellow. We are going to push the blue button. And enter the oval. You are standing in a large room now, in the center of which a console and a chair. Once again you discover the now familiar teleportal buttons on the wall. One is red and the other is blue. Facing the chair and the console is a large viewing screen. On the console can be seen a white button and a green button. So let's push the white button. The viewing screen is activated. On the viewing screen can be seen a display of the Earth and a display of the Moon and a display of the Mothership. An energy beam appears on the screen and you watch it as it destroys the Mothership. The buttons recede into the console and the screen deactivates. In case you are wondering, I never got this far in the original playings. So this was all new to me now. The sh blowing up of the mothership, etc. From before. So now we need to get out of here. And to do that, we are going to go and push the red button. and enter the oval, push a yellow button, enter the oval, push a red button, Enter the oval, push another red button, enter the oval, push another red button, enter the oval. We are now at the galley. Push another red button. Enter the oval. Push another red button. Enter the oval. You are now in a large rectangular room. Every moving picture races before you. On the wall behind you, there are three buttons, one red, one blue, and one yellow. They are arranged horizontally with a red button on the right. You are in a small cubicle. There is a yellow button on the opposite wall. On the wall, on the near wall, there is a small square hole about two inches deep. The hole contains a two-inch green cube and a rod with a green sphere. We are going to go east. You are now in the crater where the UFO has landed. The crater opens to the east. The entrance to the ship has been blown clear. A three-foot-tall shaggy creature with razor-sharp claws and slavering teeth stands before you. This is what we need, the 
other shotgun shell for. Remember? It was a double-barreled and we had two? Blam! The alien is lifted and thrown backwards by the impact of the blast. Its limp body falls to the ground. The alien dies and rapidly decays to d dust before your eyes. You collapse with exhaustion. If you have any water, better drink it now. Let's drink the water. You feel refreshed. And now we have to just backtrack out of here. So, forgive me, I am going to just rush through this part. We're going to go east, south, 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 west, 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 south, west. I may have just gotten lost. I was not able to return, but I believe that we are going to consider this the end. I hope you have enjoyed the majority of this. Uh, all I needed to do was return to the town, at which point, well, or the starting point, at which point I would have gotten 100%. So that was as much of Xenos as I am willing to complete right now. I could have completed 100% if I had returned to the starting point of the game. Unfortunately, it would take me the better portion of an hour to get to it again, and I have no desire to repeat that a third time today. I appreciate everyone who followed the game with me, who spent the time out of their day to listen to me ramble about something that I quite enjoy. And as always, questions, comments, considerations are more than welcome. I will try to answer everything that may come up. Thank you, and have a nice day.